tonight. Seton Hall will defend its home court. The Pirates are 9-1 and one in East Rutherford. It's cross-state rival Rutgers, winners of four in a row in a crucial Big East game next. We're in Continental Airlines Arena tonight in East Rutherford. A critical matchup between the Knights and the Pirates. Their records so far are very similar, and this is going to be a very important for win for one of these two teams, either Rutgers or Seton Hall. I'm John Sanders along with Matt Doherty. You talk about Rutgers, a team on a roll for the first time in their history. They've won four straight conference games, and Irve Lamazama has been the guy leading the way. Well, they want to establish Irve down low. He's such a talented young man. He can score inside. He passes out a double teams, he gets offensive rebounds, he can really do it all at about 6'10". Here you see him with the offensive rebound, and then with the mid-post catch, and he takes that one hard dribble, he can turn to either shoulder and put the ball in the basket. He gets to that basket in a hurry, and his numbers in the last two wins, one against Notre Dame and most recently the overtime win against Miami, he has been spectacular. It was a disappointing midweek loss for Seton Hall against West Virginia, something that's not supposed to happen to them, especially if they get Kelly Whitney, their inside guy, on the roll. Well, just like Rutgers, Seton Hall wants to establish Kelly Whitney inside. A very good post player, can score inside. Great balance, great strength. It's important that they get him going early. You can see the difference when they win or whether they lose in the Big East Conference, and Kelly Whitney is a big factor there. It is the state rivalry of New Jersey. It is going to be renewed tonight. It's the first of two between these New Jersey neighbors. Rutgers, Seton Hall, straight ahead. The arena is alive. A battle of New Jersey. Seton Hall won both games last year. Lewis Orr, the head coach of the Pirates, who are 4-3 in conference play. The Knights, their fans are here as well, they are five and four. They're in the starting lineups. Lamazana, Exani, Shields, Webb, Wigan for Rutgers, Tony L. Sweet, Whitney, Barrett, and Allen. The starting five for the Pirates of Seton Hall. It's amazing when you look at the numbers of these two third-year coaches. Louis Orr, of course, the former player, first former player to become a head coach in the Big East Conference. He's taken his team to win NIT. And you see the numbers for him so far and the numbers for Gary Waters very similar to the numbers of uh, head coach Lewis Orr also in his third year. And I think both teams are very similar. They both want to establish their big man down low. Irve Lamazana for Rutgers and Kelly Whitney for Seton Hall as we talked about on the open. But they also have a lot of quickness. They're very defensive defensive minded teams. I wouldn't be surprised to see a low scoring game here because both teams are very good in the half court man to man defense. Of course the Pirates want a little revenge for that upset that they suffered on Wednesday. In the meantime, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights are on a roll. They are on a roll. I think they're as confident as they've ever been under Gary Waters. Coming off for their second overtime win of the season, our referee tonight is Les Jones, Tim Higgins, and Frank Scagliata are the umpires, and it's the Knights who control the opening tip, and their contingent in red, mostly in the upper deck here at the Continental Airlines Arena. Ramazana's first touch almost turned it over. Shields for three. Good. That's a good sign for Rutgers. He's a very streaky shooter. A great three-point shooter, but he has a tendency sometimes to take bad shots. If his bad shots are going in, it could be a long night for Seton Hall. And maybe one of the keys is who shoots the ball very well, because uh, sometimes the Knights don't use real good judgment in their shot selection. But if they go down, here's Allen. He had 25 points against the Scarlet Knights last year. Sweet tries to answer the three, the three and the the sweet three, yes. if I will. An exchange of three-point baskets to start. Webb matched up against Barrett. Certainly Andre Barrett, one of the best point guards this conference has ever had, leads the league in assists again this year. This is Lamazana. Spins, gives it back. Wigan driving down the lane, and Lamazana gets the defensive rebound. Another three is on the way. This one rattles out, and Whitney has the rebound ahead of the pack. It's out, and he can't hang on. I think Rutgers is very fortunate there because after Shields missed that three-point shot, they didn't have transition defense in place. Nobody came back for defensive balance. They were very fortunate that Seton Hall mishandled that ball. 
Almost a minute and a half in. Each team has a three-pointer. This is Agzani outside, handing to Webb. Webb, certainly one of the big keys to the improvement in this Scarlet Knights team. Agzani stays at the top of the key quite often. A lot of ball screens, down screens that we see right there. This is Shields, who has the three. Now Wigan, working on Tony Al. Agzani from the corner, bending, bending, bending off. And rebounded easily that time by Allen. Well, I think Seton Hall's happy with that shot. Agzani, not a great scorer, but the thing I noticed, nobody went to the offensive boards. Irvay's got to get to the offensive boards. Good job that time by Kelly Whitney. It looked like Barrett was in trouble under the basket, got it back to his center, and he scored the basket. So Seton Hall with a two-point lead, their first lead of the night. Jewel Wigan looks inside, finds Shields, picked up by Allen. Now he's got a little room and goes back to the corner. Wigan drives the baseline, reverses, bending off into the hands of Whitney. Here come the Pirates on the run. Barrett takes with it all the way down the lane. No basket foul called. There's that one-man fast break we talked about. He can really push the ball. He's so low to the ground, so quick. He's got great vision. He sees a hole, it's like a running back. He sees a hole and he hits it very quickly. And if people come to him, he has great vision and he hit the open man. He puts it in another gear at times. Here's Whitney outside. Finds Andre Sweet. Sweet steps inside and draws the foul. I think they were fortunate right there, Seton Hall was, that they drew the foul. Irvay's got to be careful. He's fouled out of two league games this year. He has a tendency to get in foul trouble. Rutgers needs to keep him in the game. That's not the one-on-one -on -one matchup we were looking for. We were looking for Whitney in the post, but Sweetney, an experienced player, had an opportunity to take Irvay to the basket. Andre Sweet, a junior from New York City, will go to the line. Got a little mouse over his left eye. I asked him what happened. <laughs> he said he ran into his teammate Kelly Whitney in a recent game. Isn't it funny sometimes it'll happen in practice or you run into your own teammate in the game? I tell you, Whitney's the last guy I want to run into. And Seton Hall has not been very effective at the line the last two games. One of them, the loss to West Virginia. Well, Seton Hall is ranked 11th in the league in Big East play from the foul line. And if you want to win championships, you've got to make foul shots. That's one of the reasons Rutgers has been doing such a good job lately because Marquis Webb, their point guard, is a very good foul shooter, shooting over 80% for the foul line. Amazana works the baseline, gets the roll. We saw the double team come there. Seton Hall worked on that today, coming on the dribble. When Irvay puts the ball on the ground, they want to go on the dribble, but Irvay can go both shoulders. He sees the double team, spins away from it for the turnaround jump shot. Two-point lead right now for the Hall. Tried to go to Whitney. Wigan reached in. Let's see if Wigan's going to pick up the foul. He will, and so that's not good news. Joel Wigan picks up his second already. Irvay sees the double team. Tony L coming from the top side, spins away from it. Such a tough matchup. He reminds me a lot of Hakeem Warwick. They have the same tendencies, good size, can put the ball on the floor, good passers out of double teams. Off the bench comes Quincy Doobie. He is the Big East Rookie of the Week the last two weeks, and he can light it up when he gets hot. He's number five for the Scarlet Knights. Shooting over 50% from the three-point line, he really has a nice, quick stroke. Webb working on Allen. Allen feels he has an advantage on Wigan. Actually, Webb tried to go down inside. And almost turned over, goes out of bounds. Well, there's not much of an advantage right there. John Allen, 6'5", 207. Marquis Webb, 6'5", 205. Even though he's a point guard, he's a strong, big kid. He might not always be the point guard if they get another one because he's got good size at 6'5". There's a scramble for the loose ball. They're excited about the recruits they have coming in. They do have a good point guard coming in from St. Albans in D.C. Manny Cas Caseda, if I pronounce that right. Barrett for three. That's a little too strong. There's an offensive rebound by Tony L. Well, the Pirates have a fresh clock. Here comes Andre Barrett all the way in and sweeps it home with the left hand. He can finish with either hand. He's got some strong shoulders on him. So when he gets in traffic, he doesn't get bounced off the dribble. Ramazana for three. That's short. Tony L the rebound. That shot right there would be out for me. He's shooting less than 30% from the three-point line. Seton Hall wins when he shoots three-pointers. Allen turns it over. Racing back the other way. 
comes Ricky Shields. He got the game going with a three, and that attempt is an air ball. There's some of the shot selection you talked about. That gets you beat. Those are two dead possessions right there, two empty possessions. Beautiful feed inside that time to Andre Sweet, and there wasn't much that Agzani could do but lay the arm on him and foul him. Well, we talked about physical play and talking to the coaches be before the game today. They both talked about physical play. We saw that there. Exani was not going to let Sweet have an easy one. Four team fouls now on Rutgers. Seton Hall has not been charged with a personal foul. John, we saw both coaches. Gary Waters with a ribbon on his lapel. And we see Lewis Orr wearing a mock shirt and sneakers. Uh, today is a special day in uh, giving recognition to coaches versus cancer. And most coaches throughout the country today are wearing tennis shoes. Four for four at the line is Andre Sweet. Well, we can go to a break here with an 11-5 lead. Do you think these guys want this game? Watch the action along the bench. Lewisor <laughs> also in a blue mock turtleneck and at the other bench white ribbons for head coach Gary Waters and his fine staff. Well Gary Waters he doesn't want to ruin his reputation as the best dressed head coach <laughs> in the country so he went with the ribbon. Well Andre Sweet a good start for him he played 30 minutes in that loss to West Virginia and scored four points. He's got seven points in the first five minutes here tonight. Doobie outside. Robinsana's man hits the deck. He takes it along the baseline, gets the roll, and the foul. That's where Lamazana needs to be. He needs to be on that block on the mid post. That's what puts fear in Lewis Orr's heart right there. He gets the ball. He got away with a, 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 a push, but then he takes it off the dribble, draws contact from Whitney, and finishes. See, right there, that might have been a little bit dive by Andre Sweet. Took some acting lessons. Lamazana looking for his fifth point and gets it. Big foul shot for Lamazana, not a great foul shooter. So it's nice to see your big man make, make him. He shoots it at a 58% clip. Almost five minutes gone in the opening half, and we're going to go the other way. Marquis Webb is such an important part of the success of Rutgers, not only on the offensive end, running the show, making foul shots, but defensively. I watched the game against Notre Dame, and he did a tremendous job, job against All-American Chris Thomas. The Notre Dame game, if you ask the folks from Rutgers, might be the best game they've played this year, top to bottom. They were simply outstanding in, in winning against the Fighting Irish. One thing Marquise needs to be careful of, twice he's picked up his dribble, hasn't gotten in trouble because of it, but he might down the road. Nice rebound there by Tony L. Andre Barrett spins away from Shields, pulls up at the foul line, bending, bending good. Now one man fast break, he pushes it, pushes it, pushes it, and made a great decision pulling up at the foul line for the jump shot. Doobie is yet to shoot. And he is a terrific shooter. This is Webb outside. And that one rims out into the hands of Whitney, who hands to Barrett. And this is how he always keeps his head up. Always looking to advance the ball. Picks up the loose ball there. Sweet starts a move on Lamazana. Backs him down. Jump hook. Too strong. Agzani has the rebound. Good job by Lamazana not getting his second foul. He's got to be careful. Lamazana's quick three. That's a bad shot. That's going to get you beat right there. They've had three bad shots, two by Lamazana, one by Shields. There's a quick three at the other end by Allen, and he buries that one. Well, he's a very capable shooter in league play. He's really struggling, only shooting about 17% from the three-point line. Overall, he's 34% for, for uh, uh, all, all games. So it's a nice sign for Allen to hit that three. Here comes Shields. He's got room, gets help. Tipped out by Lamazana, it will go out of bounds and it will belong to Seton Hall and for John Allen. Career point number 1,001. All it took was a quick three-pointer and he joins the 1,000-point club. Do you think he knew? Do you think he knows where he's at? Do you think he knows he has 1,001 points? I think so. Well, and he did it on night when a lot of the former players, That's the right. alumni, are back here. He might have passed a few guys sitting he in the stands a little upset at him. Seton Hall two for three and shooting the three. Rutgers so far just one for six. Bill Meyer inside and that one's knocked away by Hill and goes out of bounds. Hill off the bench. 
Adrian Hill, who was a quite a football player at McKinley High School, is from Canton, Canton, Ohio. Play a little football there, don't they? Yes, they play a lot of pretty good football there. Pirates have their biggest lead at 16 to 8. This is the matchup they wanted. They wanted that ball inside to Whitney. He got his own rebound and put it back in. He's got some shoulders on him yes, right there. Yes, he does. Whitney 6'8", 240, and it's a solid 240. Doobie on a drive, offensive foul. That's great defense right there. Bill Meyer comes over from the weak side and draws that charge. Freshman has a tendency to get out of control. They close out the Doobie quickly because they don't want him to get in the open three-pointers. Great defense there by Bill Meyer. And you know what I love is how his teammates ran over to pick him up. That's team chemistry right there. That's, that's winning chemistry right there. This is Andre Barrett. Morris, who can light it up off the bench. This is the only team in the league with five players averaging in double figures, and one of them is Morris, who operates off the bench. Barrett inside, little running hook, won't go. Rebound by Lamazana. Looks to Webb. Kicks it in the corner. Three is on the way. Back the other way quickly comes Morris. And he decides to reset. Allen looked at the three. Gets along the baseline. Puts up the jumper and it's good. Allen's second straight basket. And that's going to force a timeout. All of a sudden, it is a 12-point lead. A 9-0 run for the Hall. Everybody so far contributing in their roles, even the bench players. Well, I love the energy. They have a great deal of energy. And again, I think Rutgers is hurting themselves with the shot selection. Doobie shot out of the corner wasn't a great shot. They've taken too many contested jumpers. That's good strength right there. And then to shoot it over 6'10", Lamazano, one of the best shot blockers in the country. Great concentration. Allen looks really focused tonight. More great Big East Hoops action coming up next weekend because we'll have Alan Ray, Randy Foy, the Villanova Wildcats. will head to Morgantown, West Virginia to take on Dior Fisher and the West Virginia Mountaineers. That's next Saturday at noon Eastern from ESPN+. Plus. Remember to check your local listings because the Wildcats and the Mountaineers will go at it down in Morgantown. Doobie gets it into Lamazana. Picked up now by Andre Sweet. Lamazana to the baseline. Three-pointer on the way by Shields. Too strong. And Allen has the rebound. Seton Hall again comes on the dribble for the double team. Sweet Lamazana for three. Lamazana knew his looks. Second three-pointer for Sweet. He's in double figures now with 10. And the lead has grown to 15. So an explosion here by the Hall. Well, this is where they got to stay within the team framework. Be smart. That's not a good one. That's, but that's Doobie's shot. He got it off over some tough defense. His 38th three-pointer. Even though that goes in, it's not a good shot because it's a contested shot off the dribble. It's fall, fool's gold right there. Morris backs away. He'll shoot a three. These teams are not bashful so far, are they? You know, it's interesting. Two of the best six men in basketball right here at Morris and Doobie. And they're trying to match it up. 23 to 11 is our score in this game in the recent possessions has been a battle of three-pointers. Sweet has a pair already here in the opening half, and he's on his way to a terrific night. Doobie with his first three. Well, you talked about Herbe Lamazana right at the start of the game tonight. How's he doing so far? Well, I like it when he's there. I like it when he's on the block or a couple feet off the block, taking the ball to the basket. The again, that's where Louis Orr doesn't want him to be. But when he's taking trailer jumpers, I think Louis Orr's very happy. He'll let Herbe take all the three pointers he wants to take because it's not his strength, and that doesn't that doesn't really uh, isn't as effective for Rutgers. It's 23-11 with 11-11 to play in the battle for the state of New Jersey. And last year, Seton Hall won twice in this series. And Joel Wigan back in the lineup, handles the ball outside, finds Doobie. Jumping out quickly on him is Donald Copeland, who's come off the bench now. Sweet jumps out on Lamazana. Could have gone either way. Ooh. 
wouldn't you say? Oh, Timmy Higgins said blocking foul, but uh, that was close. Oh, all I gotta say is, oh, <laughs> that was great defense right there. That scatter report on on Lamazana is shot fake and likes to go right. So everyone's got the book on him. And right there, Seton Hall did a great job of playing his right hand. Wigan to Lamazana steps around the three foul line shot too strong. See why do you leave your feet on on a three point shot attempt by Lamazana? Again, shooting less than 30 percent from the three point line. Allen for three comes up a bit short. Rebound snatched down by Hill. Finds Wigan who finds Doobie who draws a quick crowd goes baseline reverses and scores. Nice pass. That is beautiful basketball right there. I love the unselfishness. Lamazana showing another talent that he has, the passing skills. So they're chipping away at what had been a 15-point lead. Whitney catches low against Hill, muscles it up. Sweet has the offensive rebound and steps away. This is a three. He's short. And Allen went down. He's holding his left ankle. Doobie puts up the three. That's short. Allen. When he came down for the shot, I believe rolled his ankle, probably stepping on the defender's foot. Meantime, the foul went on Adrian Hill on the rebound. So the Pirates will have it back with 9.47 to play, just past the midway point of this opening half. One thing about a freshman, Doobie, uh, he wins the Rookie of the Week a couple of times, gets excited, expectations raise up, so maybe he changes his game a little bit. He's got to let the game come to him. Everyone has a scout report now on him. Don't let him shoot a three-pointer so they're crowding him. He has to be even more patient, and that's experience. Barrett with it. Gets it to Whitney, matched up against Hill. No place to go. He's got a foul inside. Away from the basketball. And the foul's going to go on Ricky Shields. So Shields was holding, and we're going to be in the one and one. Well, that's a good thing, bad thing right here. Good news, bad news. Good news is Seton Hall's in the one and one. Bad news is they're in the one and one because they're 11th in the league in foul shooting. They definitely have to shore up their, their foul shot. But this is a guy you wouldn't mind having at the line because Morris is shooting 77%. Averaging over 11 points a game and playing only 21 plus minutes a game. Well, shooting 70, 70, 77 percent overall, but in league play, he's only at 62. So uh, uh, they've got to concentrate if they want to make a run in the NCAA tournament. To the NCAA tournament, they've got to be able to make foul shots because there's more close games now than ever before. This is a parody in college basketball. He gets two, makes it a 12-point lead again. It's one thing you have to do sometimes to separate those stats, the ones in league play. We played enough league games now. I'm not a big fan of overall stats because preseason games, sometimes you don't play great competition. Now in league play, once you play more than four games, I go off of league stats because it's a truer indication of your talent level. Two for Shields. He's got five. Once again, the lead is 10. We're inside nine minutes remaining in the opening half. I'm John Sanders along with Matt Doherty. Glad to have you with us for the first meeting this year between the Pirates and the Scarlet Knights. They only stayed beyond the arc and with good reason. Closeouts, closeouts will kill you. When you close out to a shooter, you got to stay on your feet. Shields tries to answer with a quick three, and that's an air ball. Copeland had it, gets it to Andre Barrett. He races back. On the wing, the pass is stolen. Doobie to Wigan. Numbers now for the Knights and a blocking foul. Good call there by, by Frank Scagliata. Andre knew it. He was moving his feet. But the pace of this game, we talked about a half court, grinding out man-to-man -man defense. Well, that's, we haven't seen that so far, have we? I feel like we're watching the, the Lakers back in the 80s with Magic and uh, Worthy. They're moving it up and down. Exani has checked back into the lineup. Scarlet Knights will have it under their own basket. This is Wigan off the Exani screen. The dump down to Hill. And before he could get the shot up, he's fouled. That's going to go on Tony L. That is his first. Tony L, the senior from East Orange, New Jersey, which has got to be close to South Orange, New Jersey, right? 
is where the school is located. The Oranges here in New Jersey. Rutgers a little farther to the south. Doobie in the lane. That one partially blocked. Exani had it. That one rattles out. Another three-point attempt. And Barrett will push it up for the hall. Eight minutes to play first half. Doobie shows me something on defensive end. Has quick feet, stays on his feet, doesn't go for head fakes. 28-15 is our score. Whitney tried to go up and under. Instead, it goes to Doobie. Tony L racing back to defend, but he can't stop that shot. Nice move by Quincy Doobie. The freshman from Brooklyn has seven. Well, both teams have had struggled, struggled here, taking care of the basketball some. They, Rutgers is 12th in the league in assist to turnover ratio, which is not good. And Seton Hall is number 13th. They've got to do a better job of taking care of the ball. Long three by Andre Barrett, and he buries it. That's seven points now. He's averaging over 17 a game. Last year he averaged about 17 a game, so he's very consistent. Wigan from long range. Barrett has the rebound. Here he comes. Pulls up for a foul line jumper and nails that one. So I love the way Andre pulls up at the foul line. He knows when he gets to half court if he's going to go all the way or not. He's pulled up twice and made foul line jumpers. Smart point guard play. And he gets his name in the scorebook with nine first half points. And this is the biggest lead of the half. It's now a 16 point margin. And Rutgers apparently stopped the bleeding there for a while, but now it's gone back the other way. Pirates have been pretty solid so far, led by Andre Barrett. Well, again, pulling up at the foul line under control, didn't have anything in terms of going all the way to the basket. Stops, pops, two points. And, and he can shoot the quick three, too. I mean, a long three. He's got great range and played at a great high school. Mo Hicks, Rice High School in New York. Some great players. Andre Sweet played there. Kyle Cuff played there from St. John's, as did uh, Felipe Lopez, a legend in New York City. One of the things we talked about was the team that gets hot shooting is going to be in good shape. Rutgers is shooting 28%. Seton Hall is shooting 58%. And the Hall has out-rebounded the Scarlet Knights 19-7. to Well, part of the rebounding advantage is due to the poor shooting That's of Rutgers. Right. And Rutgers has to take better shots. I can't harp on that enough. Nice drive that time. Good finish by Marquise Webb. It's the first basket for the freshman from Patterson, New Jersey. We'll see Rutgers mix up their defense a little bit here, going to a zone look. Seton Hall struggled with the zone down at West Virginia. The second three-pointer by J.R. Morris. He's now got eight off the bench, the sophomore from Milwaukee. But if in your zone, you better find Morris because he's one of the best shooters on Seton Hall. Team. Doesn't start yet averages in double figures and has scored in double figures in 14 of the 19 games. So that's how what kind of a quick gun he is off that bench. One as a coach you like to have somebody like that don't you that can come in and immediately pick up your team. Webb from outside. Knocks it out of bounds. J.R. Morris using the three pointer. He's hit his last two. And Morris adds to the lead. It's 36-19. Seton Hall, 6 of 10 shooting the threes. That's why they have their biggest lead at 36-19, 5.57 to play in the half. Let's check out our Pontiac top performance of the week. Another honor for Amaka Okafor of Connecticut. Well, if they were giving him cars, he'd have a garage full <laughs> because that kid is, it, it's either he or Jameel Nelson in terms of, you know, national player talk. Every week, they're winning the, the, the Player of the, the, the Week award. Brian Gomes sneaks in there once in a while, but Emeka Okafor is winning Player of the Week, Player of the Week, uh, uh, one week after another. What a talented kid, and it couldn't happen to a nicer young man. Now the preseason pick is the Player of the Year, not only in the Big East, but in the country. And he is not disappointed with his play so far. Andre Barrett outside. We're inside the six-minute mark. This is Tony L. Looks to Barrett. Well, Amazana had a piece of it. Long three. That's that three we talked about. He's got the range. He takes it away from Wooten and gets it back. So a new clock for the Hall with 5.30 to go in the half. And the 
Pirates have led most of the first 20 minutes. First basket of the game went to Rutgers, but pretty much been Seton Hall since then. Sweets outside jumper, rims out. What a one-on-one -on -one play, and that's the reason why both teams are, are way down there in terms of average assists per game. Uh, they don't get a lot of offense off the pass. A lot of it is generated by dribble penetration or post-ups. So Zach Zani matched up against Grant Billmeyer. Wooten gets it inside. Lamazana. So no place to go. Double team over there. On the dribble. They go on the dribble. I thought Lamazana did a good job of dragging the double team to the corner. Wigan along the baseline has it knocked away. Barrett races back. He's got Morris with him. Finds him. Morris. Lamazana oh, out of nowhere are you me? for the block. I mean, we saw two great plays. Andre Barrett with the inside out dribble going to the rack. And then Lamazana with the block. Lamazana to Agzani. He lays it on. First basket tonight for the senior from Red Bank, New Jersey. Oh, what a great recovery by Lamazana. What a, what a play. I mean, you see Andre Barrett's quickness in beating Wooten off the dribble, and then Lamazana coming from nowhere to block that shot. It's 36 21. The Hall on top. Four minutes to go, first half. Morris outside. This is Andre Barrett. Whitney's waiting to check back in for the Hall off the Bill Meyer screen. Gets it back. His jumper from the side is good. Everybody contributing right now for Seton Hall. That's good execution. Coming off the pick on the ball. Rutgers shows out, holds their show, and that leaves Bill Meyer wide open for the jumper. Back to that 17 point advantage, the largest of the half. This is Wooten. Doobie also about to check back in for the Scarlet Knights. They need some offense. Amazana looks for help and gets it. Wooten's three pointer. That's too strong. Kept alive on the weak side by Webb. Well, Amazana will shoot a three. That one rims out. Again, Lamazana, that, that's the, they get a new clock, they got a new clock, just a, uh, on the offensive rebound, and then he takes a quick three. Those aren't great shots, and I know I've been wearing that coming out, but I'm going to keep wearing it out. Rutgers is just two for 13 as shooting three-pointers. Both teams playing some defense. And watch the recovery. See number one trailing the play out of nowhere for the block. Lamazana. His team go down by 17. Well, among those enjoying this 17-point lead for the Hall is Mark Bryant, one of the greatest players in Pirate history. Uh, he's a big man. I shook his hand before, before the game, and I asked him if he's going to play at halftime. The alumni game, he said no, because he's still thinking about playing in the NBA. <laughs> You know, I was at Syracuse last weekend. They had an alumni game before the game started at 5 o'clock. They played a full game. They wound up 100 to 100. They but there play. was one thing wrong with that game. Alan Griffin was playing for one of the teams, and he's 20, 25 years yeah. younger than most of those guys. That's not fair. No, it is not Did fair. Did they play 2-3 zone? They didn't play any defense <laughs> at all that I saw. Here's Doobie. But it was entertaining. The fans who came early loved it. Amazana against Sweet. Webb down the lane, lost it, dribbled it right into the hands of Whitney. Back the other way comes Andre Barrett. And that's only the second Rutgers turnovers. It's not turnovers, it's shot selection that's killing the Scarlet Knights so far here tonight. Shot clock winding down to 10. Morris in the lane, bending, bending off. Rebound, Lamazana. Herve brings it up himself. And shoots, and it goes. Well, that was an all Herve possession right there for Rutgers. Well, he shows his ability, and, and uh, he's got a lot of it. Uh, but this young man, I think, can dominate the game, and he hasn't done that at this point. Sweet goes inside. And the time able to get loose and finish the basket is Morris. So there he is, another double figure game for Morris off the bench. He's got 10 points already, including a couple of three pointers. He does quick work. Doobie for three. That's his specialty right there. That's his second. He's in double figures with 10. Went to prep school at St. Thomas More and 
becoming a factor in the Big East Conference. This is terrific three-point shooting. He's got quick feet, quick catch and release, uh, but the guy guarding the screener needs to show out and extend that screen a little bit longer so Doobie can't make a, a nice tight curl off of that pick. Inside sweep against Lamazana. Too strong, Lamazana the rebound. Pushes it ahead to Jewel Wigan. Marquise had Exani open inside. Didn't feel comfortable, but it did, deliver, did not deliver the basketball. Doobie off the screen, gets it back to Lamazana. Lamazana starts a move, spins along the baseline. That's too strong, goes right into the hands of Morris. Here's Barrett, takes a bump and comes on. Final minute, opening half. Crossover dribble by Andre Barrett. Into the lane, keeps it going, scoops it up and in. 11 points for Andre Barrett. He covered a lot of ground. Boy, he did. <laughs> Without dribbling the basketball, but he knows how to play. He knows how to get to seams. And, uh, he's got some shoulders on, as I mentioned earlier. can really finish around the goal. Wigan spinning in the lane, bending off. So just a lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball, John. And, and as a result, low field goal percentage. Uh, and, and not a lot of assists. It took him a while, but Andre Barrett finally got the attention of Frank Scagliata and got the 30-second timeout rather than waste it here in the opening half. The Hall has been in control, and coming up on our ESPN Plus Halftime Report, we'll talk about the Big East wooden candidates, and there are six more than any other conference in the country. We'll update what has happened so far today in the Big East, what is going on, update those all-important standings as the push really begins it's now February, heading toward the middle of February, and if you're going to be playing in March, you better get it going right now. No question, and, and that's execution, that's playing on the road, and that's why I think this is such a big game for Rutgers. They have not had much success on the road, and you can see UConn winning this afternoon, joins Pittsburgh at 7-1, and one, and the Panthers are playing the Irish tonight, and Notre Dame certainly a team that needs to find some wins somehow, some way. They need some big wins. Uh, they've had some wins this year, but they haven't had the big marquee wins that is going to get the attention of the NCAA tournament. Uh, and I think they definitely can make a push here down the end. St. John's, of course, un more unfortunate happenings for the Johnnies. Well, it's been a tough week, and sure it's well is. documented, unfortunately, for yes, a, a great university. Very disappointing. Barrett to Sweet. Final five seconds. Whitney working inside and draws the foul. With two seconds to go in the half, the foul goes on Sean Exani, his second. And Exani does a lot of the tough work inside for the Scarlet Knights. Well, he's their captain. He's going to guard the other team's best low post player. And in that case, it's Whitney. In this case, it's Whitney. And Whitney will draw some fouls now because of his strength, his, his mobility. When he gets it on the block, much like Lamazani, he can put it on the floor, make contact, spin off the contact. However, he's more of a low post player where Lamazana is more a mid post. Well, we type showed player. you the graphic, too, about how bad the. Hall had been at the line, not tonight. They are eight for eight from the free throw line and have an 18 point lead, their largest. This has been a terrific first half. Lamazana made a mistake right there where he's taking the ball in bounds and try to throw a two hand overhead pass right under the goal. You don't inbound the ball right under your basket. That one is tipped out of bounds and we have reached halftime. Terrific first half for the Scarlet Knights. And Andre Bear with 11 points. He had four rebounds. He had four assists. He made five of eight. Pull up jumper there. He had a big first half for Andre, 11 points. Andre Sweet had 10. J.R. Morris had 10. Three and double figures. A big halftime lead for Seton Hall. <laughs> Scarlet Knights have struggled on the road, and they're struggling here tonight, trailing 44 26 at halftime. We welcome you back to Kenton Airlines Arena. We get set for the second half of play along with Matt Doherty. I'm John Sanders. Let's take a look at some of our Hyundai first half highlights. Some good and some bad for the Scarlet Knights. Well, whenever the ball goes into Lamazana, that's generally good. But when he's shooting trailer jumpers, that's not good. He's 0 for 3 from the three-point line. He doesn't need to take that shot. If he gets the ball in the mid-post area, he's very dangerous because he can draw contact and finish, and he can set up his teammates. 
On the other end, Sweets had a great game coming out, hit three-point shots, posting up, doing a lot of good things inside, and Morris is, he's a microwave because he lights up very quickly. And what can you say about Andre Barrett? Just another very solid half for him. Well, he's been here forever, and he's such a good player. He does everything. He passes the ball, he drives the ball, and he shoots the three. Just a very valuable player to Lewis Orr. And, of course, the difference huge in the shooting percentage between Seton Hall and Rutgers. And also the rebounding edge, also huge for Seton Hall. Well, as we talked about earlier, the rebounding advantage to Seton Hall because of the field goal percentage of Rutgers being at 31%. Part of that you have to give credit to Seton Hall, but a lot of credit goes to Rutgers, and I think Shields' poor shots, Lamazana's poor shots, and Doobie's taking a couple of bad shots as well. We've got the second half to go. Another 20 minutes of basketball coming up. Can the Scarlet Knights get it going in the second half? We'll find out. Stay with us. Seton Hall fans enjoy the big halftime lead. The starters are ready to go in the second half. Same five for each team each way. Lamazana, Webb, Exani, Shields, and Wigan for Rutgers. Tony L., Sweet, Whitney, Barrett, and Allen, the five who started the game, will also start the second half for Seton Hall. We showed the graphic there. Whitney and Lamazana, both players trying to be established by their team. Not great numbers, but going inside first, the defense collapses, and that gives more opportunities for the perimeter players. Nice speed along the baseline, and Whitney will go to the foul line. And again, I think that's evident by Lewis Orr's first play. He runs a play to get Whitney the ball inside, and it's a great lateral screen. Right there by John Allen, and that frees up Whitney. That and lateral screen, if that play is not, if that screen is not set, he doesn't get open. So that's John Allen being a team player, and that's also Lewis Orr running a good play. And three for three at the foul line. And the Pirates, who have been struggling in their last two games, have not missed a free throw tonight. That's seven points for Whitney. And Agzani, the first player in foul trouble, he's got three, and they add to their largest lead. It could be 20 points if he converts this one. Well, there's nothing wrong with their foul shooting tonight, is there? No, they're focused. They, you could tell the energy. They, they were upset with their loss down in West Virginia. And they wanted to bounce back with a great effort against their rival Rutgers. Well, even their afternoon shoot-around was pretty intense today. Lewis was pretty <laughs> fired up. Yes, he was. Here's Webb. That one's short. Webb had the rebound. Instead, it's Allen coming back the other way. Finds Barrett. Stops, pops, air ball. He may have gotten fouled, but I'm sure Lewis doesn't like that shot. A contested three-point shot in transition. And you, you hear me harping on three shooting. Coach Smith, I uh, played for in North Carolina. One of his biggest pet peeves was taking bad shots. You got to take care of the ball and get good shots. Those what th those are the two things that championships championship teams do on the offensive end. Shields looks to Lamazana. Hervé starts a move. Goes baseline. Little runner rattles and bends in. A nice soft roll that time. Lamazana with nine. He's got he's got game. He is a talented young man. I just want to see more of that right there in the mid post area. That's a tough call there. On I think it's going to go on Whitney. That will be number two on Kelly Whitney. Here we see Hervé on the post. Mid post. He tossed out, starts out at the three-point line. But he's got enough ability and ball handling skills that he can dribble into the post area. Lead was 18 at the half. It's still 18. We're in the second half and working his way inside and rolling at home that time was Adrian Hill. You think uh, Coach Waters didn't talk to them about getting the ball inside at halftime? Both all. teams have gotten the ball to the block each time down the floor except for Barrett's three-point attempt in transition. And that's all we've seen from the Scarlet Knights so far, so a change in plan there. Instead of launching the threes outside, they've been banging it inside. Tony L looks inside, finds Allen who finds Whitney working on Hill, puts it up off the glass, too strong, but gets it back and is fouled. 
Well, it's like football. In football, you, most coaches want to establish the run first and then go to the end. It's the same thing in basketball. You want to go inside first, and then you can establish the jump shot. But you don't want to go outside in because if you go inside, especially with guys like Whitney and Lamazana, you have guys that can score and draw double, double teams. Once you draw the double teams, then you're shooting wide open jumpers and also giving the defense a chance to foul. Whitney against Hill. Hangs, comes up short right into the hands of Lamazana. The Rutgers staff can't talk highly enough about Hill's defense, his toughness, and his work ethic. A great, a valuable player to the, the Scarlet Knights. Nice move by Lamazana, and it's a blocking foul. Another close one. King Louie, he's not happy. I think he sprouted some new grays on that one. He got a technical the other night. First one in quite some time. I think first one of the year, he told me. Boy, that's a tough one right there. Yeah, with his mild-mannered approach on the bench, I'm surprised. Although he said he didn't really earn that technical no, foul, he, didn't he? he? He wants to earn it. You know, if you get as a coach, if you get a technical, you want to earn it. He does. He did confess. He says, I get out of the box sometimes. But uh, uh, Lou is a great guy, very mild-mannered guy. But like we talked about the shooter out today, he showed some fire. He was fiery. He, yes, he was. Know, that was a true sign that this game meant a lot. Means a lot to him and both coaches. Whitney now will have to go to the bench because he's got three fouls. So he and Exani for Rutgers are on the bench with three personals. There's the first miss we've had from the foul line tonight by either team. Well, now let's see if Louie changes his style and doesn't go inside because Whitney's out. Here's Allen. They've got numbers. Allen leans in, bending in. Well, they did a great job Barrett recognizing the press. Three-quarter court zone press. They did the right thing, getting the ball into the middle of the zone press and attack. Lamazana really looking for his shot now. And why not? He's got a chance for a three-point play. That is a very talented man right there. That post move right here puts it on the floor, sees the double team coming, spins away. You can't, you can't get to no, that. No, I was going to say, you can't defend no, that shot. Not at 6'10", long arms and a touch right there. A beautiful touch by Lamazana. If he's committed to working hard and, and being a tough kid, he has a chance to make a, a good living playing this game. And he completes the old-fashioned three-point play. 13 now for the senior who went to St. Peter's in New Jersey. Originally from the Ivory Coast, Bill Myers. Play and that's going to go on Lamazana. Well, let's be interested to see if Waters, Coach Waters, keeps up with the pressure because that's twice he showed the, showed the zone press twice. Seton Hall has broken the press to score and or get fouled. But you mentioned the recognition factor by Andre Barrett on that other play. He knew there were two guys guarding him at the other end. You had to have numbers, right? He's a senior. He played at Rice High School in New York City. There's not much that young man has not seen on the basketball floor. This is Bill Meyer, a freshman, almost seven feet tall, and he does not get the roll on number two. Lamazana will track it down. So each team now has missed its first free throw attempt of the night. Three and a half minutes gone in the second half, and a steal by Barrett, and then a foul by Webb. That's experience versus inexperience. That's a, a, a Wooden Award candidate going against a freshman, a very talented freshman, Marquise Webb. I saw him play with Darrell Watkins, who's now at Syracuse, a freshman at Syracuse. I was recruiting Darrell Watkins when I was at North Carolina. And this young man really stood out. And I said, where is he going? He's a good player. Uh, no surprise he's having success here in the Big East. Barrett with a runner. Too strong. Hill the rebound. Here's Webb. Tried to skip it all the way across to in front of the Rutgers bench. And Allen tapped it away from Ricky Shields. Shields came in with 52 three-pointers. He has just one tonight and averaging almost 15 a game. He's only got five this evening. Well, they're really jamming him, and that's something I talked about to Brian Nash, the assistant at Seton Hall. They wanted to jam the three-point shooters, especially Shields. Over 70% of Shields' shots in league play are three-point attempts, so you want to crowd him out past that line. Joel Wigan looks for help, gets it to Lamazana. Shot clock now at 10.
Shields from deep in the corner buries the three. He doesn't need much room. No. He, he didn't have any room in that corner. My goodness. Allen was there on the catch, but he had to shoot as he the shot clock was going down. Here's Andre Barrett on the drive. Kicks it back to Sweet for three, and he nails another one. That is the third three-pointer tonight for Andre Sweet. 52-37 the hall. Andre's having a big game. Four points in the loss to West Virginia already with 13 tonight. Here is Shields. Mike Shields hits one three, he thinks he's hot, so he's, yeah. he's hunting that ball. Yeah, give me that ball. Well, most shooters are that way, aren't they? Like, they Matt make Carroll, care they want it back. I coached Matt Carroll at Notre Dame for a year, and he said, I shoot to get hot. <laughs> Good work by Webb to get inside, but he misses the shot. The rebound gets it to Andre Barrett on the wing. Why not keep shooting? This time Sweet misses. Allen got it back and misses the easy one. He went underneath, went with the left hand, had a pretty good look and came up empty. Lamazana draws two. Webb shoots three. That's short. Bill Meyer, the rebound. And the sixth man is going crazy. You can tell Bill Meyer's a, a fan favorite. Yes, I bet he is. But he's done a good job tonight off the bench. Yeah, and he did, good minutes. did a good job early in the year when Whitney was uh, had to sit out because of academic reasons. Bill Meyer started about eight games and, and did a great job early in the year. Barrett's turned around on the baseline. Tap loose, track down. Here come the Scarlet Knights. Shields fade away. Good, and he's fouled. <laughs> Now he's feeling it. He's got 10 points now. He's feeling it. He felt the way he's coming off the bus. <laughs> You're probably right. Well, Ricky Shields tries to get it going. As Tony L picks up his second personal foul. Doobie checks back into the lineup. Webb will sit. And Shields will try to complete the three-point play. And trying to slice that lead to 12. It was 18 at halftime. Grew to 20. Shields is shooting. A better percentage from the three-point line than he is from inside or overall. He's uh, shooting 44 percent in lead play from the three-point line, 40 overall. He's an exciting player. He gets 11, and they have sliced the lead to 12. It's 52-40. Seton Hall, but the Knights coming back thanks to the play of Shields. Still 14:06 to play on our ESPN Plus Big East game from East Rutherford. One mistake and boom, four prime years gone. However, slip behind 260 supercharged horses and the most powerful, best handling driving machine in its class, and your life will still go by fast. But this time, it'll be a real good fast. The 2004 Grand Prix with Comp G, the new power of Pontiac. That's fuel for the soul. Experts at Hotels.com know exactly how close all the places are to where you want to stay. All at the best price. Hotels.com. Best prices, best places, guaranteed. There's no place in the world like New York City. It's electric right now. We've taken some gigantic steps, but I, I feel that we can still get better. If you want to be good, then surround yourself with strength. Van Horn has been playing outstanding basketball. Allen's a smart player. When you're running the floor with Stefan, you better be ready. Kurt Thomas has been steady as a rock. I expect us to keep improving. Garden has always been an exciting place, and now to get that energy back is incredible. The Knicks on MSG. This is our town. 
There's the sixth man, or maybe it's six men and women, but for Rutgers in the second half, a little bit of a surge thanks to the play of Shields. Well, he gets hot, and uh, Louis Orr talked about it before. They take some threes, and they could miss five in a row, or they could hit five in a row. Right now, they're hitting the shots. That's, that's an NBA kind of play right there. There's not much more you can do. You fouled him, you had a hand up, and he still made the shot. It's 14 to 8 edge in the second half for the Scarlet Knights because Seton Hall is just 2 of 9, and the Knights are 5 of 8. Shields and Lamazana have scored 12 of those 14 points here in the second half. So back in the hands of the man you want with the ball, Barrett. This is Morris off the bench again. Looks inside, goes inside to Shields working on Lamazana. Spins, puts it up and in. Boy, he's having a terrific night. 15 points for Andre Sweet. Playing with a lot of confidence. And to take it to, to Lamazano, one of the best shot blockers in the league like that, that, shows his level of confidence is very high. Doobie with room in the lane, and he finishes that one off. He really knows how to use screens. He curled that screen very nicely. Allen pulls up for the jumper and nails it. John Allen has nine. So much for that uh, half court lock them down defense. Guys got hit. Got, guys are hitting running one handers and jumpers with hands in their faces. Joel Wigan in the corner. Shields thought about three there, but passed on it. Shields thinks about three <laughs> 24 hours a day. Who, who are you fooling? Lamazana's turnaround won't go. And Sweet is going to pick up the foul. It's, it'll be his uh, third. So the foul starting to mount up for a couple of guys here. We've still got almost 13 minutes to go. Very disappointing first half for Coach Waters and his staff down 44-26. They've made a bit of a move here in the second half. Lamazana will get a pair at the line. He is three of four so far tonight. He's made five field goals. He has seven rebounds and 13 points. Working his way toward maybe another double-double. Ben's home free throw number one. Well, he played at the same high school that uh, Bill Meyer went to, St. Pat's, coached by Kevin Boyle. They do a great job. They do a great job there. They've had some good players through that program. Sweet to the bench, Lamazana. Misses number two, and Morris snatches the rebound. <laughs> Joel Wiggins really pushing on Andre Barrett. Crossover dribble gets to the foul line. See it changes speeds. I love how it changes speeds. Allen in the lane has it stripped. Lamazana brings it back for the Knights. Here's Shields. Look out. He's, it's always loaded, that gun. Women and children first. <laughs> Lamazana working against Tony L. And it's taken away. Allen. Morris, Barrett to finish. Boy, they can convert the turnover real fast. Ramazana goes baseline. He spins into the double team that time. He's always been spinning away from the double team. He's got to know by now that when he puts the ball on the floor, that double team's coming. Doobie gets it inside to Ramazana. Backs away. He'll shoot a three. That's blocked by Morris. Barrett has it. Ahead of the pack, it's Allen, but it's Morris to lay it home. A dozen for J.R. And Gary Waters does not like it. The alumni are here for Seton Hall, and the Pirates roar back to a 17 point lead. In the case of the Hall right now, they're turning that defense into offense. Good work on the break, and the finish by Andre Barrett. And the emotions running a little high here at Continental Airlines Arena. One of the six men are enjoying right now a 17-point lead thanks to the fact that the Hall started this half two for nine, but they've made their last four. And Andre Barrett is now eighth on the Seton Hall scoring list, 1,681 career points. He just passed Ken House, who played in the late 60s, early 70s. That young man's parents are watching that saying, my goodness, their hard-earned money has gone to tuition at Seton Hall, and that's what he's doing with it. Long three by Doobie. He'll shoot three. The foul is on J.R. Morris. The, the last thing you want to do is foul a jump shooter, but Doobie draws a lot of attention, and he's going to put up a lot of threes 
in the next four years at Rutgers. See, busting through the screen, Morris, I'd rather trail the screen instead of busting through the screen where you get caught up. I'd rather trail it. I call it shadowing the screen. You get on his outside hip and chase so you're there in a catch. Then the player guarding the last screen in that double screen really show out to try to extend the screen so Doobie can't curl. Well, Doobie does not miss too many at the line. And he's missed two in a row here. So he's now 40 of 50. He had been 40 of 48 coming in. Barry's the last one, makes one out of three. And the freshman from Brooklyn has 13 points, but it's the Hall still in front, leading by 16. So the Knights got it down to 12, and it's back to 16 now. And let's check out the BMW ultimate drive of the game. It was a terrific fast break by the Hall. Well, there's the double team coming on the dribble, and I love how he centers the ball. He gets the ball to the middle. It doesn't touch the ground. Great pass by Morris, and Barrett so fast in transition. Boom, 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 and there you go. And I got to tell you a funny story about a BMW. I had a BMW as the head coach of North Carolina. And you know, when you lose your job as a coach, you also lose your car. And they come after your car like a repo man comes here. Like, I, like I stopped paying for it. Would you wake up in the and middle of the night? Cried. Somebody no, they had to come get the keys. I wanted to hug it, kiss it goodbye. Because I don't know if I'll ever see another BMW again. Oh, that's terrible. Well, first thing you do when you lose your job as a coach, you gotta go buy a couple of cars. You gotta buy one for my wife and one for me. Talk about a tough day. <laughs> it is a tough day. Fortunately, I have a friend named Michael Jordan who owns a couple of car dealerships. So <laughs> he had a I couple extra calling. vehicles. I went calling. I said, Mike, remember all those screens I set for you, all those passes I made? Give me a break. Wigan now with three fouls and Barrett a miss. He doesn't do that very often. Free throw shooting not as good in the second half as it was in the first. Barrett with 13 points, five rebounds, six assists. So make it 14 now for the senior from the Bronx. We are in the Continental Airlines Arena here in East Rutherford. Along with Matt Doherty, I'm John Sanders. Glad you could be a part of this. These two teams will wind up the regular season at the rack in Piscataway. And that will be something. And if you're interested, there's a three-pointer by Lamazana. No good. Bill Meyer has the rebound. That game's it's already all, sold out. That's the ultra fourth in the three-point line. I, I tell you, that was a nice play by Doobie drawing the double team and throwing it behind his back. But I tell you, I just uh, think Lamazana can really help himself. Not only here with the team, but also at the next level. Working on the shot selection. Easy rebound for Jewel Wigan off the miss by Allen. Wigan takes it all the way in, scoops it up Hill right there to tap it home. Just the second field goal tonight for the sophomore from Canton, Ohio. 61 46. The difference is 15. It's been as many as 20 and as few as 12 in this half. And that is as close as the Knights have gotten. There is a three that's too strong by Allen, but Tony L. With an offensive rebound, he looked around, nobody there, he scores. His first basket. Lanzana needed to make sure he stayed awake and stayed between Tony L and the basket. He opened up a lane to the goal. On the way in, Wigan is fouled. The foul is number two on Andre Barrett. Here's the offensive rebound by Tony L. He fakes the pass out. Lanzana goes for the fake, and then he ducks into the goal underneath, off the glass. Tony L and Andre Barrett were part of that great recruiting class with Eddie Griffin. Back under Tommy Amaker, who's now at Michigan. And that is the first foul on Andre Barrett, not the second. Wigan has come up empty. He's 0 for 7 from the field. And 1 for 1 at the line, so the first point. They still have a chance here. 10 minutes, 13 points. Well, the Hall has dominated the boards, haven't they? Yeah. They've dominated the fast break situations. They've dominated the scoreboard most of the night. If they can get it, Rutgers can get a couple stops here. Easy baskets. With the momentum will change in that crowd up in section 207, 208. 210, 209. Might, bu might bust 
the roof off of uh, Continental Airlines Arena. Let's see what Barrett can do with three. He misses the mark. Allen, what a rebound and put back. At 11 now for John Allen, who joined the 1,000-point club early in this ballgame, and that was a terrific effort at the offensive end. John showed his strength down there in the offensive boards. Shields with a miss from the corner. Hill keeps it alive. Works on Whitney. Left hand missed the shot. Another nice rebound by Tony Allen. Well, there's the coach on the floor, Andre Barrett, dribbling with his head up. The wings from Seton Hall run for two reasons they run, because they're well coached and they're, they're good athletes, right? And then a third reason, they run because they know that Andre Barrett will deliver the basketball to them. Three fouls now on Irve Lamazana and Allen, who's been fairly quiet. He had a 25-point effort against Rutgers last year. This is his first chance. He's a good free throw shooter. He's got a dozen points tonight. Lama's on into the bench. And Magzani, who has three fouls, comes back. Allen, one out of two. Doobie has the rebound. Well, both teams are in the bonus. Rutgers, the next time they foul, Seton Hall will be shooting. My point with bringing that up is Rutgers needs to get fouled to score while the score for the foul line while the clock is stopped. Doobie tried to get it back and in the process commits the foul. That'll be his second. He took it inside, ran into traffic, turned it over, and now we'll walk to the other end and shoot some free throws. Well, frustrating play for Coach Waters, but when you're playing with freshman guards like Doobie and Webb, you've got to live with some mistakes like that. I, I, I had a a talented group at North Carolina last year started three freshmen, two sophomores, uh, Raymond Felton, Rashad McCants, uh, had a big win today at Wake Forest, but they're going to make mistakes. But it's a big adjustment from high school to college, especially in this setting. You almost have a full house against a rival in Seton Hall. 15,252 the attendance. The capacity is just a little over 20,000. Whitney had it, thought he was fouled. As the Scarlet Knights strip it away and come back in the hands of Jewel Wigan. Well, you notice after that turnover by Doobie, they put the ball in the hands of Wigan, but that's not a great shot again. Easy rebound for Sweet, and on the drive, it's J.R. Morris with his 14th point. Well, what a boost he is off the bench. And back to the 20-point lead. Timeout. We're in East Rutherford. And the Hall is back up by 20 with 8.26 to go. And once again, trouble at one end leads to points at the other end. Turnovers and bad shots lead to easy layups, especially against St. Seton Hall, because they are so fast in transition. I love Andre Barrett dribbling with that head up. I talked about the wings running hard because they know that if they run hard, Andre Barrett's going to deliver the ball. I think the other thing you have to do in those situations, you have to keep running because if he decides not to go to the wing, if you're the trailer, you might also get an easy basket. You might get an easy basket or the offensive boards. Uh, but Andre Barrett, boy, just a just a, a, a wonderful kid to watch transition because he makes good decisions. He knows when to pass the ball. He knows when to take it to the basket or, or, or himself, and he knows when to pull up from the foul line for that foul line jump shot like he did twice in the first half. He has seven assists so far this evening. That's uh, better than his average. He leads the conference in assists. This is Doobie. Works his way to the foul line. Gives it up along the baseline for the jam by Hill. The thing I like about Doobie's play is the bounce pass. Coach Smith always talks about the bounce pass is the feeding pass. The only way you could stop that pass is to kick it, and then Rutgers would get the ball back again. Stolen away by Hill. Races down oh and hits goodness. the deck. Landed on his right side, is holding his right arm on the court. John, he was up in the air and landed flat on the floor, and he is one tough sucker right there coming out, coming off the floor. Tony L., who was receiving the pressure and made the bad pass, commits the foul, and that hurts. You see him grab that right upper arm area. Well, Tony L. 
try to get into the to draw the charge, but Exani was kind of blocking his path and clipped him a little bit. Once he realized he couldn't get there, he tried to get out, which is the worst thing to happen because all you do is throw your hip in there and you take Hill's legs out. But what a tough kid to bounce off the floor after that. Now some of that football at McKinley High School where helping the, him here. Where are the pads? And then he has the, the toughness to make the shot. Free throw shooting has been good both ways tonight. Can't really complain about it. It had been a big problem for Seton Hall in their last two games, but they have shot the ball very well. Not only from the foul line, but from the field in general. Doesn't get the roll on number two, and Whitney's right there to snatch in the rebound. Luck is really picking up the pressure now. And Lewis Orr recognizes that, wants to organize the press offense, not to give Rutgers a chance to make a serious run. So he takes the timeout with a 17-point lead and 7.53 remaining to be played here in the ballgame. A reminder, we've got more Big East action coming up next Saturday, a week from today, and it should be a terrific matchup as Villanova heads to Morgantown, West Virginia. And for Nova, it'll be Alan Ray, Randy Foy, doing the job offensively against a terrific shot blocker, a guy that you don't hear a lot about, but there he is, Dior Fisher. He can play some defense. That's next Saturday at noon Eastern from ESPN Plus. Villanova, West Virginia, check your local listings. I thought a good time out there by, by Coach Orr, recognizing that Rutgers was picking up the pressure, wanted to make sure that they don't start throwing, Seton Hall doesn't start throwing the ball around and Rutgers can convert it into quick points. So you, you, good, good piece of coaching right there, I thought. And that's a foul on Webb. <laughs> he, had, he had the arm of Andre Barrett tucked away. Foul on, on Webb. And, Andre cut to the basketball and you want the ball in his hands. Now he was not going to let Barrett get away. He just clamped down on that arm and drew the foul. So it's a one and one. We'll be in the double bonus before long. A couple more fouls. Team fouls are even in the second half, each with eight. I have a feeling we're going to shoot some free throws here in the next seven and a half minutes or so. Fifteen now for Andre. Sweet returns, Tony L to the bench. Tony L. Some big plays, rebounding and a big basket. As Barrett converts two. He has 16. The lead is 19. It's 70 to 51. Seton Hall looking for conference win number five. It's 70 to 51. Let's check out Shooting the Rock. It's brought to you by Rolling Rock Beer. Grab a rock. the numbers so far. The Rutgers only four three-pointers made. Seton Hall a little better. They've made seven three-pointers tonight. Well, Seton Hall really shooting the ball very well from both the field and then the three-point line. Big take, numbers for them, but the three-point shooting for Rutgers obviously has uh, really hurt them tonight. You take 44% three-point shooting I'll from your you, team. That, <laughs> that's a great number. That's a great number considering uh, they've been shooting 31, 32 uh, percent from the three-point line in the league play number, uh, which is 11th in the league. So that, that's tremendous for anybody, especially Seton Hall. Here's Shields. He's kind of quieted down, gets to the baseline, puts up a runner, and misses everything. It's not the shot you want out of a timeout. Andre Barrett taking charge. He'll work a little bit of clock. Well, this is zipper. A little zipper cut here. Down. Down screen on the weak side. Allen goes back to Whitney who lays it home. Great execution right there. Another player in double figures now. There are, as there have been most of this year, five Seton Hall players in double figure tonight. Doobie loses the ball, goes to the ground, picked up by Andre Barrett. Here's Allen. That counts. And the foul is going to be against Rutgers. It's how they got there a little bit late, but you think Andre Barrett's having fun or what? When he gets that ball in the middle of the floor, he's got all kinds of options open up to him. He's got his head up, little jump pass, no look. Could have gone either way. Sonny may have gotten there just a little late. I'd like to play with Andre Barrett. The only problem would be, John, is that he'd be in the front court and I'd still be in the back court. I wouldn't be able to keep up with that sucker. He can move. He can really motor. Final seven minutes now. And the lead is 
the biggest of the night. They're up by 24 points. Well, this has been a very solid performance by Seton Hall. Great performance, great energy on both sides of the floor, the offense and defense. Tapped out of bounds by Whitney. Knights will keep it with 13 on the shot clock. You know, the double figure scoring, this is what they are averaging. They've got five players, the only team in the league with five and double figures, and they've done it again tonight. Well, that's, that, that to me starts with Barrett because he's distributing the basketball. He's hitting the open man. And he's got guys that can finish. Not only Whitney inside, but he's got guys that can shoot the ball from the perimeter. There's that quick look at the three by Shields. That is his third three-pointer tonight. He has 14. But do they have enough time to even use three-pointers to get back in this ballgame? Well, for Seton Hall right now, shot selection is going to be key. Juby <laughs> had him around the neck that time. <laughs> Shot selection is going to be key in turnovers. You want to work the clock, burn the clock some, and then get good shots. You don't need quick shots, and you definitely don't need turnovers. And if they're going to put you to the foul line, you got to make your foul shots. And, and um, I feel confident with what St. Paul's done early in the game that they'll finish up the game strongly from the foul line. The Hall is 16 of 20 at the line. And Andre Barrett will add to that. He's made four or five, and he's got 17. You get the impression that they don't want Andre Barrett to touch the ball. Well, they don't. It's tough to stop. But one, one thing I think that I, I'm a little keep an eye on is as, as Rutgers moves from this game, Gary Waters did not want to invest so much emotionally because of the rivalry. He wanted to treat it as a game because you don't want to do a downward spiral from, spiral from here because they have to, to head to Syracuse and play. That's a nice block by Whitney, and he gets it back. Just as there can be launching points from your season, there can be points in the season where it goes the other way. No question. You don't want to invest so much in one game that you don't have enough in the tank for the next game, and they've got a challenge yeah. uh, next, early next week. They, on Tuesday, we'll be playing at Syracuse, so it's going to be a tough test. Andre Barrett decides not to shoot that time. Allen nails it. Great execution right there. I talked to Lewis about that play. This is a play we ran at North Carolina. A lateral screen by Allen. Then he gets a down screen. His man has to help on the ladder. It leaves him wide open for the jump shot. Wigan misses the three, but Webb keeps it alive. This is another three-pointer. That one won't go. Tip try is no good. Tips up again. Here's Allen. He's got Morris on the wing, and Morris will take it in and score. They're putting on a transition clinic. My boys in the sixth man crowd, they, they, they were giving me some love before the game. Well, this is an impressive performance. A 13 to 3 run by the Hall. And Gary Waters, all he can do is watch. Knocked away. They tried to go inside the hill. Morris winds up with it. Andre Barrett will take his time. Final five minutes. Some of the folks heading for the exits. And the Seton Hall fans really appreciate the effort they've seen tonight. This is one of their better performances of the year. And a big bounce back game after after uh, West Virginia. True gut test and they answered the bell. They were trying to run that same play that Allen got that open jump shot in the in the previous possession. And they, Timmy Higgins called Allen for the legal screen. His second foul. Well, and tough test is coming up for the Hall in their next game. They'll have to go right back to work against Pittsburgh here on Monday. Hill inside, puts it up, bending, bending, no good. John, the future's bright, though, for Rutgers basketball. When you're talking about two talented guards in Marquise Webb and Quincy Doobie, you have a sophomore in Calvin Wooten. Hasn't played much, but a very talented kid. Shields comes back. Uh, Wigan is back. Uh, they've got some good recruits coming in. Water has things in position for Rutgers, I think, to take off. 29-point lead, and it's a 20-point ball game for Andre Barrett, who's done a little bit of everything. Are they loving this here at the Continental Airlines Arena? Seton Hall has made its last seven shots. That's tough to compete with, and Shields turns it over. Morris, Whitney wants the alley-oop. It's too strong. Coach Jordan want the alley-oop. He's thinking, I don't want Whitney's legs to get cut out from under him. Webb inside and fouled on the play. That'll go on Allen. And that will be number three on him. Right now, I think Lewis Orr would have been content for them to take about 30 seconds yeah. off the clock. He, he, he doesn't want anybody to get hurt in this kind of situation. He wants to 
doesn't want to get play to be sloppy. You always hate, hate it with a big lead, and all of a sudden you try to make highlight plays, try to get on Sports Center and, and, and throw the ball away. You want to finish the game off in a proper manner and then let the subs come in. The guys who bust their tail in practice, they deserve an opportunity to get in a game like this. And here we have two subs coming in, Donald Copeland and Matty Messi. to the bench. Terrific performances. It was Andre Sweet who really got him started in the first half. J.R. Morris off the bench with another outstanding performance. And Andre Barrett. Sweet's congratulations for him, but Andre Barrett putting on a show. 20 points, and he has led his team to the big lead. Found in Rutgers basketball and what may be coming up right now they're getting drubbed pretty good by the Pirates of Seton Hall who have played a terrific game but Gary Waters has this thing headed in the right direction. Now they were in a decent position last year to get something done and they kind of faded coming down the stretch. We'll see what happens this year. Young younger players the younger guards have really helped settle this team down. Marquise Webb uh, takes good care of the basketball and can make foul shots and then Doobie coming off the bench adding instant offense has really helped this team in some close ball games that they've won this year. Allen with it. Here comes Barrett. This is their push offense. You'll see the four and five on the baseline and three perimeter players just moving around, dribbling, and trying to get penetration. Allen miss and the putback won't go and the foul is called. That's Manny Messi who got that offensive rebound and got the air ball. And so he will go to the line. Let's look at the schedule that's coming up for the Scarlet Knights. There you see those are conference records of the opposing teams. You see Northern Colorado jump in there and there's a gap. Most teams have a week gap, one week gap in their schedule in January, February. And it's important to fill that gap with a team that may not be as good. But you get to a rhythm in your season where you're playing a weekend game, a midweek game, and another weekend. And if there's a too long of a gap in there, you lose the rhythm of your season. I did that my first year at North Carolina. We had a week off. We were ranked number one in the country. We went down to Clemson and lost. Never again will I have a week gap, so one week gap in the season. So that's why you schedule that. The University of Pittsburgh just went through a Wednesday, Wednesday schedule where they didn't play a Saturday game. Follow slam won't go as Doobie tries to track it down. Instead, it's Bill Meyer coming out of there for Seton Hall. The tough thing is finding a team to play because everyone is in conference play. So it's tough to find a team that is willing to play at that time of year. We're going to run a zipper play. You'll see a, a person pop, player pop to the top and a down screen on the weak side. It's Messi feeding Copeland. Now they're in their push offense. Little movement. Trying to dribble to the middle. Yep. Barrett, the veteran, is not looking for his shot right now. He's looking to work some clock. Copeland gets in, dishes it off, and goes out of bounds right off the hands of Davis. See, that's where the bounce pass is, is that feeding pass. It's easier to catch for Davis because it's a slower pass, and you just have to have your hands down by your waist. An uh, air pass can get deflected, or it can be anywhere from your chin down to your knees. It's a harder pass, and it's a quicker pass for a big guy to catch in, in the lane like that. Wooden gets it to Hill, who draws a foul. And I'm kind of wondering why you're still playing Andre Barrett at this point in the ballgame. Well, I, I, that's a good question. I think there's a sub coming in. You have Morris at the table. You probably want to give him an ovation. Uh, if anything, what we would do in certain situations, you want a senior or a special player to get an ovation uh, to show that he's appreciated by the crowd. You let him go back on the floor and you sub for him as opposed to doing it in the middle of a timeout where he can't get that round of applause coming off the floor. You'll get a round of applause now. 20 points, five rebounds, nine assists, just one assist short of a double-double, but make no mistake about it. He was the field general, the court general in this game tonight. I'll give him a round of applause because not only is he a terrific player, but he's a terrific young man. And Hill missed both of his free throw opportunities. Davis has the rebound. Sometimes, John, in games like this, a guy, you know, if he's close to a triple-double and maybe one rebound away, I, I tell the kid, 
I tell the kid, you know, I'll give you till the two minute mark <laughs> to get that last rebound. Otherwise, you're out. Yep. And uh, I did that for Jason Capel, who played for me in North Carolina. Uh, because you, you have your SID sitting next to your bench, and you'd like to have a young man reach a milestone as long as it's in good taste. You don't want to rub it in your opponent's face. But if he's a rebound away from the triple double, and there's four minutes to go, you let him play, say, to the two minute mark, and then you take him out. He has been terrific tonight, and this entire Seton Hall team has had a very good evening. Trying to stretch their home court advantage to 10 and 1 on the year, but remember, they've got to go to the rack for Rutgers is 10 and 1 this year. Well, that's a tough place to play, a true home court advantage uh, in the Big East. Webb slashing down the lane, has it bad of the way. That's one where Frank says, we got to catch a plane. I'm not going to call that charge. But you got to admire the big fella stepping in and, and attempting to draw the charge. Alex Gambino. Doobie lost at Hill, who has battled hard inside, is going to go back to the free throw line again. Unfortunately, he's missed three in a row. Well, the foul is going to go on Davis. Let's take a look now at our Cooper Tire defensive player of the game. A couple of blocks, 11 rebounds for Kelly Whitney. He did have a double double here tonight for Seton Hall, and everybody has pretty much enjoyed the evening, especially in this New Jersey rivalry, which will be renewed on March 7th, the final regular season home game. And he's clearing that bench now because Keating is coming in, Eric Hazard coming in for the Knights. It's, a, it's a be, going to be a tough ride back to Piscataway for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. I've been on the wrong end of some games like this, and the only thing to do is, is bounce back. It's a, it's a true sign of how tough you are. Are you going to bounce back or not? Well, yeah, fortunately, it's not a real long trip. It's only 30 or 40 minutes down the road. It'll be a lot longer than that for this team, <laughs> though, I promise you. Here's Copeland. Hazard knocked it away right into the hands of Keating, who feeds it back to Hazard and he lays it in. Great bounce pass there by Keating. I love the bounce pass and transition. Good spacing on the two on one break. Nice finish there. Well, that's the first field goal for Eric Hazard this season. Only the fifth game in which he has played. He had one total point coming into tonight. But I tell you, you go to any practice and you watch. Some of these walk-ons, the work that they do, and you really can't build a program unless you've got those kind of people. They're vital. They're vital now, They're even more so, because you only have 13 scholarships as opposed to the 15 you used to have. So when you have 13, you need some players, at least two, to have 15. So you have three teams of five. Uh, but you, they're, they're vital to the success of, of every big-time program. Final seconds tipping away, and Copeland is content to let the clock run down. It's going to be 85, turn it around the other way, 58. So a terrific performance by Seton Hall here tonight as they get the victory going away. They led by 18 at halftime. They finally win it 85 to 58. Huge night for Barrett and the Hall. Big night. And Coach Orr has to be really pleased as we talked about in the, in the walkthrough today. Uh, a normal, normally calm, quiet Coach Orr was really fired up. Uh, went through a very intense workout. Now five players again in double figures for Lewis Orr. Andre Sweet had 15. Kelly Whitney a double double with 10 points and 10 plus rebounds. Andre Barrett had 20 points tonight with nine assists. John Allen warmed up in the second half had 17 and J.R. Morris off the bench had 18. Just well, a very balanced game for the Hall. Typical Seton Hall basketball and I wonder as superstitious as coaches are is Coach Orr and his staff going to wear the sneakers and the mock turtlenecks <laughs> again next week? Well, we'll find out because their test is Pittsburgh. It will be here on Monday. It's a road trip coming up, though, for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. They will have to play the Orangemen at the Carrier Dome in Syracuse. So we'll see what happens the rest of the way. But for now, a key win for Seton Hall as they upend the Scarlet Knights 85-58. to 58. A reminder, stay tuned for more Big East Hoops action next Saturday. Villanova Wildcats, led by Alan Ray and Randy Foy, will be in Morgantown to take on the West Virginia Mountaineers, led by Dior Fisher. That's next Saturday.
Thursday at noon Eastern. Check your local listings. For Matt Doherty and our entire ESPN Plus crew here in East Rutherford tonight, I'm John Sanders. Thanks for watching the final again, 85-58 Seton Hall over Rutgers. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports television.